2,000 years ago, the greatest event of all time took place, the biggest miracle for all humanity. Two unsuspecting teenagers, the most powerful man in the world, the least respected workers of all society, and academics from a distant land all played significant roles. Let me set the stage. Here in Rome, where these ruins now stand, was the official government palace of Caesar Augustus. This is the place where he would write the decree found in Luke chapter two. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancee, who was now obviously pregnant. Knowing Caesar Augustus was used by God to fulfill prophecy of the birth of the miracle. Mary, a teenage virgin, was visited by the angel Gabriel, and the message he would deliver to her would change her life forever. She was to give birth, and even though she had never been with a man, still a virgin, but her child would not be a normal child, the Christ child. Joseph, a teenage boy, was confused and disappointed, angered and embarrassed. The childhood love of his life was pregnant and he was not the father. A heavenly messenger visited him as well to reassure Joseph that indeed Mary was still a virgin and the pregnancy was in fact a supernatural event planned by God. Even though God was in it, even though God had done it, even though the greatest miracle of all time was taking place, things were still difficult and every decision would be crucial. After a long distance and physically challenging journey and faced with a destination full to capacity, God of all the universe chose for the greatest miracle of all time to take place in filthy conditions. In fact, in an animal stable. Christ, the savior of all mankind, would sleep in a feeding trough. The first guest to visit, the king of all kings, the infant child, would be shepherds. Considered by Jews to be the lowest of all society, worse than a modern day garbage collector. Later on, very wealthy academics from a distant land would visit presenting lavish gifts fit for a king. Before this event, none of these individuals would have ever considered that God of all the universe would use them to facilitate the greatest miracle of all time. But he did. Things could have turned out very differently. Mary could have chosen not to be the mother of Christ. Yes, abortion was available even then. Joseph was already planning to annul the upcoming marriage to Mary. Augustus didn't need to take a census. He could have instead just taxed everyone from where they lived. The shepherds didn't need to visit the Christ child, and the academics didn't need to follow a star, possibly for years on a long, expensive, dangerous journey just to present lavish gifts. But they all did. 
they all chose to participate in the greatest miracle of all time. Two years ago, I had no idea God would use me and Mission Roma, you, to be a part of a miracle. But he did. By now, you probably know the story of my adopted son, Andy. I was just doing what I always do on Monday evenings, helping people at this train station here in Rome. He was there on the street with no food, no bed, no friends, because of no fault of his own. Over time, he came to live with me, and he stayed almost one year. Recently, his biological mother invited him to return home. The very next day, he had a job. Their relationship is healing, and God has let me be part of it. I recently went to Milan, where Andy lives with his family. From the moment I arrived, I knew God had planned these things. But I also realized I had made some specific choices that allowed these things to take place. I'm humbled to have been used by God to restore a family. And I'm hopeful even more is ahead for all of us. As you know, I've just returned from Moldova, where relationships and new opportunities for ministry have presented themselves. While I was there, I met this dear lady. At the age of 17, she was taken by the Stalin regime to a concentration camp in Siberia. We had the opportunity to minister to dozens of widows, elderly and needy. Please pray that God would use Mission Roma throughout Europe as He wills. End of year giving. If you or your business would like to use your gifts to Mission Roma as a tax benefit for the calendar year 2018, your gift must be postmarked before December 31st. Now would be the best time for your giving. If you would like to give a missionary a Christmas gift, Check out my Amazon wish list. The link is below in the comment section. I pray you and your loved ones have a very Merry Christmas. And I pray you will be the miracle for someone.